And so I'm finding that it's really, really important to really get out right in front of it. And as part of my onboarding, I am re planning to revisit it, even just going into this new semester. But I've really decided to dedicate more time talking about what is an appropriate use of translators and AI versus what is not really setting those boundaries, setting them firmly and right out of the gate. Is that kind of what you do too, Heather? What are those types of conversations or what does that content look like for you? Yeah. Um, and it's some, it's, it's actually a conversation I have several times, um, over uh, the course of a semester, you know, I tell them upfront, look, you know, you have this, I know you have this, um, right now, you know, especially at the very beginning, I want you not to use it. Everything that you need is, is here provided for you. Um, if you do engage with it, ask yourself, like if, when it, when it gives you content, when it gives you something, are you able to explain every single element of what you see? If you're not able to, then you have no business using it. Um, and, you know, I, I tell them things as, as their teacher, like, look, I know exactly what you can produce. I know what you can't produce. I'll know when you use a translator and I know when you're, when it's your language and when it's not. Um, and if you want to test me, you know, test me and, and, and you'll see, I tell them that if you use a translator, you know, the very uh, first thing that, that you're risking is a very uncomfortable conversation with me. And worst case scenario is this, this is escalated to like a Dean of Students issue. So I try to put that like at the beginning, like don't, don't engage with them to do your work. Um, it's, it's actually challenging to say, fine, you know, look up a word. If you're reading something, and if you don't know it, look it up. That's fine. That's what I always did. You know, if you don't understand a string of words, have it translated, that's fine. But going the other way, when you're trying to convey something in Russian, if you use a translator and you don't know exactly, if you can't explain exactly what it's producing, you don't need to use it. Um, that's what it looks like. And for the most part, I'd say like 85% of students just eschew them altogether and just try to use the content that's um, included in our course material and uh, create within those parameters. Um, and then others uh, look outside and I have to have conversations kind of offline individually with students. Um, and it's it's really a learning process. Like how, I don't think that, I don't think students are being, you know, malicious or that they're they're trying to get an easy A. I think that a big issue with a lot of our students is they truly don't know. This is the first time they're learning a foreign language. They don't understand that Russian isn't just English translated word for word into Russian, you know, and they don't know how to use these tools. So sometimes it takes like having offline individual conversations about using these tools effectively. Um, it's really just student by student scenarios, I guess. Absolutely. And there is a lot of just getting to know our students as individuals and maybe potentially offering the help that they need so that they're not misusing tools and things like that. So there's a lot of things to think about. Shannon, anything to add to that, talking a little bit about maybe even during the online, the, the onboarding process, how do you help students understand what is and isn't an appropriate use of some of these technologies? Yeah, one specific thing I want to share is that I always show them this video. It's kind of an old video, but it's still funny. Um, it's called something like Translating with Babblefish. Um, and it has a, a girl who uh, takes a Japan, I think it's a Japanese recipe, and then she uses an online translator to translate it into English, and it comes out with these really crazy uh, sounding translations into English and then her her recipe like catches on fire and everything uh, and so I think it's a lighthearted way to at least start the conversation so that it's not all like completely serious like oh you're going to get in trouble or something like that but just to have a kind of funny way to 
start talking about it. And like I said before, I do discourage them from using translators for the first part of their learning. And then I do have a specific lesson where we talk about, you know, how productively to use them, um, you know, use uh, like Yandex Translate or Viki Slovar and show them like, don't pick, just pick the thing that comes up in the in the box, like there's a lot of uh, things that appear below that give you a lot more information and then helping them realize, oh, I do know how to identify a noun versus a verb. And so if I need a verb in a particular sentence, then I need to make sure that what I'm choosing is at least a verb. Um, and, you know, then there's some other tools uh, that that give a lot of examples and, and kind of explaining them to them how to use that. I don't think there's any silver bullet to getting out of this um, with with online translators, um, but you know, hopefully, at least um, for me, and when I'm teaching second year Russian, most of my students do actually want to learn Russian, and so it's and like Heather said, I don't think it's a situation where they're maliciously doing this. It may be just they ran out of time, you know, to finish their homework or something like that. And so I think in most situations, our students really do want to learn Russian. And so if, if um, we give them these tools, hopefully they will uh, learn to use them. And, and like you said, a lot of them feel or think that it's just a one to one word translation. And that, you know, that's something that um, it, over time, they understand that's not the case, um, and that uh, using translators in that way can just hurt them in some instances rather than help them. Absolutely. And just having those conversations and setting the groundwork early, I think, at least for me personally, I think I've avoided a lot of uncomfortable situations that way. Thank you for that.